I think it's about 50% trade, but the more lasting effect is Fed tightening, higher interest rates, inflation rates becoming more problematic, and the, and the potential for the debt overhang to ultimately be what kicks us into a profit recession in a year and a half. But in the near term, it's trade. And I'll quickly add that for, uh, for the market, we probably have another 5 to 6% potentially on the downside, which would bring us back to those valuations which were much more attractive to be a buyer in February 2016 on an earnings or cash flow basis. And let me ask you this. You're the second person today to talk about inflation. We had Richard Bernstein on who said that investors needed to protect their portfolio for coming inflation. Do you agree with that? I do. I think from the early 80s until maybe a year ago, we operated in a disinflationary environment where the rule of thumb was, if I think stocks are risky, I go uh, de-risk and I buy bonds. And in an environment where it's becoming more inflationary, inflation rates moving from 2% to 3%, you have to start to think about more inflation protection in commodities, in master limited partnerships in energy, something that's going to give you a yield, uh, uh, real estate in some cases, infrastructure, that's going to give you a more inflation protection. Okay. When inflation's above 4%, I get worried, but when it's moving from 2 to 3%, I have to think about an inflation bucket going up in portfolios, and there, there's a few cases. Jason, you're sticking by FANG. You saw what happened yesterday. And granted, FANG has rebounded in today's session, but it didn't recoup all the losses from yesterday. Uh, are you concerned that we, you know, with this market volatility, even if we are within a trading range, which we have been for much of the year, uh, that tech is just the ATM when things go rocky? You know, it's a great question. I think momentum is the ATM when things go rocky, and FANG is part of that momentum trade. I mean, we've seen small caps pull back as well, a little bit more than the market, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense given the fact that small caps are not exposed to what we're seeing with regards to global trade anxieties. So, yeah, I think momentum is a place that portfolio managers go to take some off the table when they're de-risking. But that undercuts, in our view, what is some really strong fundamental stocks in the FANG group. We don't own Netflix, but the other uh, letters in that acronym, we're still very bullish on. These are secular growth stories that aren't trading at demanding valuation. So I think you can still look to those uh, as uh, leaders in the market and leaders in one's portfolio. Do you think the, the market uh, um, will move higher, Jason, this summer, or are we going to have to wait until things settle out or shake out a little bit and maybe the midterm elections get out of the way and there's a little more clarity on trade? Yeah, so short-term market predictions is definitely not my forte, but what I will say is that, you know, it really what dictates the, the tail of the tape on any given day, week, or month is just the market mood. And I think if we continue to get headlines that uh, call into question economic growth as a function of bad trade policy, then I think the market's going to have a hard time breaking to new highs. Meanwhile, we have the midterm elections coming up, and we know that in midterm election years, typically the market likes to see how that fleshes out before mm -hmm. investors commit new money. So there are some headwinds to the market over the short run, and that's all a function of psychology and mood. Mm -hmm. But over the long term, we still like the fundamentals interest rates being low, inflation being low, earnings and the economy doing well. So we continue to be bullish on the market. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.